Every day I imagine a future where I can be with you. In my hand there's a pen that'll write a poem of me and you. The ink flows down into a dark puddle. Just move your hand with the way into his heart. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? Hey everybody, <laughs> welcome to the Game Joe Dark PB1. Today we are going to do our 69 subscriber special. Yeah, that's right. We hit 69 subscribers. I'm going to put that up on the... Ch uh, I'm going to put a screenshot up on the screen now so you all can see it hit there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> all right. So we are going to just jump right on this. I accidentally skipped the first uh, dialogue box, but that's fine. You can go back and read it. Uh, but anyone suffering from anxiety or depression... May not have a positive experience playing this game. I wonder why. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't understand why. Would you like to review detailed contents? No, I don't want to spoil the game. Even though I kind of already have spoiled the game, because you know, if you don't know what happens in Doki Doki Literature Club in tw by 2021, you've been living under a rock, or you're just not cultured. Oh, look, there it is. Uh, I probably should have waited till this part came on to do that. <laughs> Do, do, do. Every day I imagine a future where I can be with you In my hand Wait In my hand There's a pen that'll write a poem of me and you Me and you The ink flows down into a dark puddle in your hand, in your hand, in your hand, heart. This world of infinite choices. What would it take just for you to have it? Okay. Okay. We are going to start up this game. Can be with you. The game Joe has entered the battle. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any action she might be drawing attention to herself. Any attention she might be, whatever. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor. And good friends since we were children. Wait, let me, uh... Okay, whoops, uh... You know the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. Let me let me do a voice. Uh, all right, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a voice for the main character. I don't know how long we're gonna be doing that voice. I might shift it up a little bit, but we are just gonna we're, we're just gonna go with it, okay? Okay. Uh. All right. Let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll do. I'll make this a multi-part series. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Should I go with whichever? Vo I'm gonna do two voices, and then stick with one for this video. Let me know by the next video what I what voice sh I should stick with. All right. We used to walk to the school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting. Or, but if she if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I sigh and idly in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ah! Oh! I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe. 
but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. That's the voice we're gonna stick with for this video. Let me let me know which one you'd rather hear, though. Yeah, you, you said that you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, the game, Joe. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you didn't did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want it. Why are you say say, Ori? <laughs> we cross the street together. Or should I should? We cross the street together and make our way to school. That's his That's his internal monologue, but that's not how he sounds out loud. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly, increasingly specti spectacled. I don't know if that's the way you'd use that. And other students making their daily commutes. By the way, the game, Joe, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested. Oh, wait. I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. That did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. For all you not anime people, a neat is like uh unsociable outcast sort of thing. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises though. I feel like it's kinda like a lumpy space princess from Adventure Time Boys, but uh. I also did that voice for Crone when I did uh, Dragon Ball Z at Bridge way back in the day. That's still on my, uh, not on my one Facebook, but it's on my uh, my main Facebook, like my personal one. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? It's not good. It's not a good at Bridge series, but it. I had fun making it when I did it. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if it does exaggerate, ex exaggerate everything inside her head. The school day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom with that while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that the only ones left in the classroom for me and her. I thought I'd... I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some more encouragement, so I thought, you know... No what? Well, then you could come to my club. They are Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Uh, meanie. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she's only she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. 
since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. I slowly contemplated my life choices as I sat here, wondering what this girl was going on about. That said, my interest in the literature club is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. We're getting a lot of looking at high school, high school DXD boobies, okay? Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Why don't I go look at high school DXD boobies, you friggin' quad? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday that you'd be... Bring it, that I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> I hope it's okay. Don't make promises you can't keep. I'm gonna go to the look at anime club. Look at boobies. I, I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. A really long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? But, yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for cupcakes. I dejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member's here! I told you- Oh, I- I told you- I told you, don't call me a new member. <laughs> uh, I glanced around the room. Welcome? Oh, wait. <laughs> Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Eh, seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, that game, Joe. What a nice surprise. I hope that I hope I hope that's not a game Grumps did. I might be subconsciously because that's that <clears throat> the only influence with this with this game I've had is watching Game Grumps play it. I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember. I think they did a they did a they did like a voice for her. I don't remember what the voice is. I hope it's not a robot voice. God, I feel like it was a robot voice, but it just works so well because she's a robot. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Also, I do a mean robot voice. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls and awesome DXD titties. Except her. She doesn't have any titties. She's flat. But some people are into that. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Ah, oh, so sorry. Not, not, not Suki. That's, I don't remember the voice. I don't know. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first year student. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her. She's, she, when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that to me. Like, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with the people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet you both. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, the game, Joe. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other well. We rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me, so genuinely, feels a little... Yeah, yeah, tell Monica. Come sit down the game, Joe. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. 
I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I beat them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then tell me how I make. S then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged in a form of table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been wide, so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, here, are you ready? Ta -da! Ooh! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking. That's okay. <laughs> well, you know. I should I should do like uh, I should feel the Game Grumps Toad voice for Natsuki actually. Yes, I agree. And take one. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Also, it's pretty late, and I don't want to scream Toad voices. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcakes around in my finger, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She definitely wants to bang. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. I wonder if the icing was made by her. If you catch my drift. I thought it was really gone. Thank you, Nuts. It's okay. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't heard this somewhere before. You made them for you or anything. Ugh. I thought you technically did say or so I already said... Well, maybe. <laughs> but not for you, you know, you dummy. Alright, alright. Ugh. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying the tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us, and before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray... You okay with the whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry. The teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that's not it. Insulted, Yuri looks away. It meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime of mine, but I, like, at least enjoy tea. I'm... I'm glad. Yuri faint- Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and then smiles at me. So, what may you consider the winner archer or club? Uh, like, titties? I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't enjoyed any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... And now that I'm, like, here, like, these titties are off the chain. Also, we're good. These girls are all over 18. They said so at the beginning, so it's like, it, that means it. That's like a fact. That's okay, don't be embarrassed. Well, make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it is my duty to make fun club fun and exciting for everyone. Maka, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the other major clubs. 
Weren't you a leader at that debate club last year? Can we change the music? Because if I have to listen to this song on loop, I might actually go insane. Oh. Uh, mm. <laughs> Crank that music up. No, I guess not. Alright, whatever. Are you all later of the pay club last year? <laughs> uh, 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 well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. I might go insane if I have to keep doing a robot voice. And if uh, it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Beep boop beep boop. Monica really is such a great leader. Yuri nods in agreement. Uh, I'm surprised there aren't more people in this club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting all the effort to start something brand new. And especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work very hard to convince people that you are both fun and worthwhile. But if it makes school events like the festival that much more important, I'm confident that we can really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everybody? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! <laughs> Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different, such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find all of these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, the game show, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> playboys. <laughs> Dude, Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> I like, I like playboys. <laughs> Considering how little I've read in the past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Ah, uh, like manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head perks up. She is a weeaboo. It looks like she like wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not mu not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking, after seeing Yuri's sad smile. God, her tits are fine. I think I think this main character is a bit of a pervert, guys. <laughs> Anyways, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. She is officially the Butterscotch King. <laughs> My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmen behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Girl, I know all about them isekais. Well, technically those wouldn't be isekais, but isekais with all that stuff she just said are awesome. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes lit up that she finds her comfort in a world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with a deep psychological element usually Im immerse me as well. Hands fall asleep. Ah. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyways, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. It suck. I desperately grasp for something I can write to at a minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well uh, be having a conversation with a rock. 
Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, it's almost as if you're going to kill something. <laughs> I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at a world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes... Yeah, Natsuki's eyes turned over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What? <laughs> what? I don't know a voice to give Natsuki, I'm just sort of doing like a... <laughs> sort of thing. What gives you that idea? You left a piece of straw paper behind last club meeting. I looked like... It looked like a poem you called. Don't say it out loud. Give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is as cute as you are. Sayori, siddles, 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 saddles, siddles. We're gonna go with siddles. Up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulder. <laughs> cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems. I write poems all about how nice your boobies are. <laughs> Well, I guess sometimes. What do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometimes? Meow! Natsuki adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ugh, not a very common writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. A truest form of writing is writing to oneself. A truest form, my bad. You must be willing to open up your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, all oh, my vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Don't you have writing experience to Yuri? Maybe if you share enough of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel more comfortable, even to share hers. Uh -huh. I guess it's the same for you, Yuri. You look so hot and bothered right now. Like, are you, like, good? Uh, I wanted to read everybody's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. A deaf, piercing silence. It draws throughout the room, and it reminds me, I'm in a room with three chicks right now. Four chicks. Four of them. With four chicks right now. And I could probably be motorboating one. And then I snap back to reality and realize, no, that, that's never going to happen. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. <laughs> Nat and Yuri. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri look quizzily... Quizzling, quizzly at Monica. Let's all go write a home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other, and that gives me an excuse to bring back the game, Joe. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Uh. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now we have a new member. I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen our bond of the club. Isn't that right, uh, game troll? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. And uh, what is that? Now that we're back on the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly, co bluntly come forth, bluntly, someone's been hitting that blunt, come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Zara may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and uh, I lost my train of thought while four hot chicks stared at me. And Yuri, especially Yuri, all four girls stared back at me with dejected eyes. 
ba 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 It seems Monica had broken because she just kept saying ba 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 so I just ignored it. I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm... The game, Joe! Uh, y- y'all are, like, fine, but, like, uh... I- I'm def- defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls, I might just have to kill myself. <laughs> Alright. Okay, I've, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Then I realize, Monica's eyes aren't, like, lighting up right. I think they're red. Oh god, is that a laser beam? Yes, I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hi. You really did scare me for a moment there, darling. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would have been super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Doki 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 doki. Ugh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we all can share. Monica looks over at me once more. That game, Joe, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Oh, we're gonna write a bomb poem if we get to. I don't remember. E e e. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, whatever. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, the game, Joe, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after school at the literature clubs. Sure, I might as well. Yay! Her head explodes. With that, the two of us depart the classroom and make our way home. The whole way, the mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori. Natsuki. Yuri. And of course, Monica. Will I really be able to be happy spending every day with the school and literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Now we're gonna hit the friendship ending, everybody, because I'm not trying to be about that life. Alright, I'll just need to find... I'll just need to make the most of the circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. I don't know why that sentence was so difficult. And I guess... That starts with writing a poem tonight. Just so you guys know, I'm slightly dyslexic, so, you know, that's how that goes. Time to write a poem. Pick the words you think your favorite club members will like. Something good might happen with whoever you like the poem. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. We're gonna, we're gonna try and... Why did she like Dark? She should like Dark. She's the emo. You're the emo. Whatever. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, adventure. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Who are you? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh my god. Uh, whistle? Yes. Okay. Oh, God, they're so similar. I don't know. I'm scared. All right, 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 all right. Melody. Okay, that worked. Why do you like misfortune? I hate you. Kitty. That one was, that one was a given. Okay, 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 uh... Incongruent? Oh my god. I don't know where we're at. Are we even now? I know they're even. Alright, so we're good on them. 
Uh... Why did she like grief? Why? Why? Oh, such salt. That gets me so salty. Hi again. Hi again. Hey, Angel. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ah, ah, ah. Nah, don't worry. That's might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. When I'm back at the literature club, I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, the game Joe. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. Say, Lori told me you didn't even want to join the club this year. And last year, too. No, you plan to come, just come hang out or whatever, but like, ugh. If you don't take this, like, seriously, you, then you won't be seeing an end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone with a small chest. I mean, for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! <laughs> I feel like I should have given her the I like God voice, but I don't know. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back down in her seat. Don't worry, guys. The Game Joe always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. That's right, guys. The Game Joe always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. So, uh, I'll take this moment to say, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos if you want more silly things like this. He helps me with busy work without even me even asking. He's the perfect anime waifu boyfriend. Like cooking and cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. There's like cheese on the walls. I almost say your house on fire once because you're the like the fire that you set was on the bread. Is that so? <laughs> you two are <clears throat> Wow, you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous as I shake my bosoms out like that with my arms behind my back. How come how come you and the game Joe can How come you and the game Joe can become good friends too? Uh um that RA Hmm Hmm as usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me in. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, wait, Sayori? Ah, uh, me? Ah, uh, not really. Don't be shy. It, it's really nothing. What is it? Uh, n never mind. They already made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. I walk over to Yuri and I go, Hong Kong, and I grab her bosoms. I don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So this nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. So if you're gonna whip them out, just do it already. I mean, I'll make it. You, it'll make me happy no matter what. Is, is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if I if you don't want it to be. Oh, uh, all right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. I don't really know anything about you, but you know, like, here's a book. You should read it. Read the book. Read the fucking book. Do it right now. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, and even if you don't usually read, and we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Uh, this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She's not supposed to be the cute one. She's supposed to be the deep and brooding, uh, 
What is that word? What is that word? She even picked out a book she thinks I'd like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. You! Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everybody is settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. That doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica have a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she is waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I mean, who wants to go to the literature club to read? Ugh. I could probably fall asleep right now. That would be a good use of my time. I close my eyes and end up listening to Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Mm, mm, I don't know how you do hmm and robot. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not that like all add up all to you, you know. We just need a way of showing everything that at every way. Something that speaks to creative minds. <laughs> that doesn't solve the problem though. Eh, what do you mean? Logical fallacy. Logical fallacy. Detected. Destroy. Destroy. Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after that, can we can we do the thing to speak to their creative minds? What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. I don't know why they just don't put on a play. Isn't that what they usually do at literature clubs? It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What? What kind? Ah, uh, well, we could. Good thinking. <laughs> uh, 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 good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Oh, uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes, as previously established. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcake speaks to the creative tummy. Hehe. <laughs> ah. Cupcakes it is then. I cannot eat them because it messes with my motherboard. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. We're gonna read poems. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to all things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. It would probably be a lot bigger, because you're probably like twice her size. Wow! wow. I don't even know what that is. I might as well find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair and into her bosoms. Hehe, <laughs> sorry! Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. I... am happy. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. There should be, there is a napping club in an anime. What anime was that? Was that Chinebio? I think that was the, I think that was Chinebio. This isn't a napping club. Does our school have a napping club? Cause like, that'd be lit. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Always, always playing those Atome games where you find out the main character is actually an evil robot. 
Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know, or more time. You'll need to get used to it. Now say that out loud. Anime is friend upon in high school for some reason. I glance over my shoulders to see if Monica overheard. It's true though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? <laughs> not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's a... Uh, it's a secret. I know it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't e I can't even do that. Look, Sarah, it's written all over your titties. <laughs> Sarah glances around at herself. She looks down at her chest. <laughs> when she looks down at her chest, she sees a big sharpie marker. I have not been sleeping right. <laughs> How is it written all over me? Oh, I didn't I How's it written all over me? You're a Clara in a rust this morning. Look at your hair, it's still sticking out all around you. Like comb your shit, girl. Eh. I run I run my fingertips down the side of Sailor's hair trying to straighten it. As I do, I get pricked by something. Apparently she has spikes on her head. And you're I need a brush for this. Rush for this? My, my hair is just really hard to get right. I don't fall for that. There's more than there's more than just your hair. These spikes really hurt. Look at your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain in your collar right there. I bend down and I lick the toothpaste stain. She seemed really into it. I try to wipe the stain off with my finger. It doesn't work, so I decide to start licking it. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Your feelings are irrelevant, girl. Hey, you meanie. I don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Your titties are just hanging out. I probably said the word titties too many times in this playthrough, but that's fine. People like hearing the word titties, I think. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? It's because I won't touch you with that dirty toothpaste on your neck. <laughs> that's super mean. Alright, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. As I reach her chest, I give it a long look. Once you see how much better you'll look, it'll look. Right. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh God! Look at her face. Look at her face. Oh my God! See Ori. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, your face. It was just I was thinking how weird it is to have a friend who doesn't like these kinds of things. Who does these kinds of things? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Ah. But don't say that while I'm near your titties. I'm really close. I can just squeeze them. Don't make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Ah. I have not gotten to put any influ influence in this game yet at all. I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? It's like your titties are just so bad. <laughs> I struggle to fully close the buttons near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Hehe, <laughs> I don't know. It did when I bought it. <laughs> uh, have you ever, if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? Quit looking at me like that. Nobody wants to see you smiling at them like that. It means my boobs are getting bigger again. I mean, I'm glad she said it, because if she wasn't going to say it, I was. Don't, don't say that out loud. You're going to you're gonna make my, my 
trouser snake excited. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so, uh, maybe, uh, get a bigger shirt. <sighs> Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, ooh, ooh. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. She strips in the middle of class. Ooh, glad we didn't have to animate a, or draw a buttoned up version of this. That's much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? I'm pretty sure it's the opposite. And why are you saying anything like that? It's a good a, a good thing. Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. You're making my ears bleed. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Gee, Jays, 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 Jays. <laughs> Can't do it, Mr. Garrison. Jays. But anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. I forgot that's what the conversation was about. Only if you, only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. That's a deal. I mean, the only reason I was sleeping is because, like, I don't want to read a stupid book, but whatever. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Uh, I, I guess so, uh-huh. So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning, right in my room. You're doing it again, Sayori. I swear to God, if I come to wake you up in the morning and you're freaking hanging from a noose, I'm gonna kick your face. Oops, spoiler. You're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking that time, so it's okay, right? Man, it's impossible to tell one with you sometimes. Okay, everyone, time to read your poems. Monica suddenly calls out, Why don't we share why don't we share our poems now? Yay! The game show, I can't wait to read yours. I bet they're slightly more towards me than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic. I'm glad that I read that right. <laughs> but Sayori still trots away to re retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find some someone to share with? I I can't wait. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically, enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a comp composition notebook. I don't know how to say that word. Composition? I don't know. I can already see uh, Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. We're gonna go with uh, her. Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ugh. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Uh. Oh. S sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um. I like this. This. This is. This beat is my jam. That's fine, don't force yourself. I'm, I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts more into words. Hold, hold on. Okay. This is the first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess it might be after reading through it. It's trash. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. I'm glad we. I'm glad we both read that right too. No, no. I did. Did I just raise my voice? Ooh. I I didn't raise her voice, so I don't think she did. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her head in her f and 
things. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. That's fine, I really didn't notice. Uh, what were you saying? R right um... I'm glad we both didn't really notice her raising her voice. I mean, to be fair, like, whatever. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable, noticeable thing to recognize in ri new writers is that they try to make their own style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and then form fit the two together. The end... The end result is that both styles and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, once Yuri finds her train of thought, it is as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone. She sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together. It's probably the most challenging part. It might take some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you your valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. That's fine, you catty bitch. <laughs> I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, or me, or Natsuki, or herself. Don't mind if I read your poem now? Please do. That would make me... I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Your smile dreamily as it... Wait, Yuri smiles dreamily as... If there's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of fun. After all, this isn't supposed to be... A literature group. This is supposed to be a literature club? I didn't read that right. Ghosts under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glows. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight. To have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calm. Breathing air. That is calm, right? Yeah. Of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Uh, I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. I'm glad she said it, because I was going to say something. But it's fine. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. Then, dude, you were not reading the same poem I read. I'm slightly dyslexic here. That was impossible for me to read. But I did it. But I took it... I, it took you a long time to read it. You know what? She's got me there. Also, oof. Ah. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. You know what? To be fair, he's right. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Ugh. That's a relief. I mean, it was pretty, but it was pretty hard to read. Am I all right? <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. It was not just... I mean, if anything, it was too descriptive. It was just like, I usually write longer poems. Not all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Not something as deep and brooding as my butt. I mean, as my soul. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in a ghost, Jerry? Uh-huh. Actually, this story isn't about ghosts at all. The game, Joe. Uh, really? I must have totally missed the point. Or, like, I'm dumb or something. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work? They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to get let go of the past, and is soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. 
I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy to make that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying, or just quit this club while I can. I'm counting on you. Who should you show your poem to next? Let's go to Monica, because... Hi, the Hi, the game, Joe. Having a good time so far. Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Always listening. Always watching, Wazowski. She's always... Uh, Monsters, Inc. Whatever. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up later. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, alright, the game, Joe. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past things soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm. Processing. 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 I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. That's not true. That's so. You and Say You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had that sort of thing in common. Ah, uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually, like, a really, really, really different. Ah, uh, well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also similarities that you wouldn't expect. That's the way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you are really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that the kind of vibe I get when reading your poems. Hmm. Yeah, sure there isn't reading too much into this, because this is like really weird. Ah, 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 it could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone as happy would show and enjoy sad things too? Yo, she she's right on that. I had no idea. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I. I'm sure glad I'll end up trying different- I'm sure I'll end up trying different things later, or a lot, whatever. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love for you to try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. Don't force yourself to write the way everyone else does. Oh my god, she just keeps going on. Huh? It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Uh, that's cause I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Oh, let's read it then. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the directions, the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No. I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retina is already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. 
It wasn't too bright. It wasn't too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize... That I... In... Okay. Wait, there's more. Wait. Wait, what? Oh, wait. I realized that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. I was wondering why it was, like, cut off like that. I just, I just assumed that it was, like, glitching out. Okay, whatever. Beautiful, beautiful poem. Oh, what did you think? Hmm, it's like very freeform, if that's what you call it. I'm sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback, but it was pretty cool. Uh, 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 it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Uh, well, I'm not sure if that's how you put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany lately. That meant influencing my poems a bit. Uh, Piffany? I hate Piffany, she's a hoe. Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff because that's kind of coming on strong. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Never dip twice, only once. Never four times, only twice. Only two. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try too hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something done on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think of this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Alright, we're gonna do Sayori next and we're gonna do Natsuki last. Because Natsuki will kill my voice. And then <laughs> hopefully someone dies by the end of this uh end of this poem session. Oh, oh my goodness! This is so good, the game Joe. Uh, Ugh. I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Like, Ore, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not good at writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I just press the buttons of the words. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I do, I, what I like either. <laughs> Jays. Your opinion was way more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki. What? I didn't even... Natsuki, we didn't do anything with. Are you even... Sure you don't like it? Just because I wrote it? Uh huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people you know. So when I read your poems, it's not just a poem. It's a Game Joe poem! <laughs> Yo, she's she's all about that game joke, guys. Come on, yo, say Ori's a subscriber, are you? Come on, 69, everybody. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. She rips it with her boobies. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be a 69 subscriber special if we didn't talk about boobies, I'm not gonna lie. I'm really j happy it's just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Oh, I roll my eyes. Living the dream. 
Ugh. Well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'm break my promise. See? It's like I said before the game, Joe. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Try new things like this for other people? That's something that only a really good people could do. Thanks, Sayori. Having a dream. <laughs> I'm sure... I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motives here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? This will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay! Now that you're... Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I'll say about that. I hope we didn't miss out on the uh, other poem like it wasn't too long. Doesn't matter. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you, too. Even if it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Okay. <laughs> uh, say, oh, yeah, it was like really good, but then he just wrote at the end, I want breakfast. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> you, you can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It was pretty good. Uh, it came out nice, or how should I put this? It just sounds like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last... <laughs> especially that last line. <laughs> I made eggs to and toast. I didn't know you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Uh, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> that was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. I think you might have brain damage. But next time, I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Uh, I guess I'll be looking forward to it. Who should I show my poem next to? No, I think that's everybody. Well, it's about time. I expect it from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I should give her like a sassy, sassy street voice. It just didn't invoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll, uh, I'll pass. Ugh. But anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Oh god. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, but people can try. But that's about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, crickets can, uh, crickets can also make chirp noises at the end of that, too. Yeah, I told you uh, you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. No, it was terrible. I uh am. -um. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Wow. Because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't but isn't the point of a poem for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Oh boy, monkeys can climb. That shit hit me hard, bro. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do things so it can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about- I mean, I guess the last line, like, yeah, people can try, I get it. I don't know, I don't know, I didn't like it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose, because that's how I roll. It helps bring out the feeling of the last line. Well, you dead. I guessed more went in it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Oh my god. That face she's making right now, I'm not gonna lie. She thinks that she's cute, but she's not allowed to be that cute. Didn't expect that from the youngest one out of here, did you? Yeah, guess not. <laughs> I decided to humor her with that last comment. I didn't really care how old Everett is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. There's a little more stress, uh, this was a little bit more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. I did the best poem, shut up. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poem can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica were happily chatting. My eyes laid on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchanged sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this lang- oh wait, yeah, what's with this language? Uh, um, did you say something? Uh, it's, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem with, to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say that it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is, uh, cute. Cute? Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clear you're not feeling you're giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I can read. I can read. I just meant language, I guess. Monkeys can climb. <laughs> I was just trying to say something nice. Yeah. You mean that you have to try hard, that hard to come up with something nice? Thanks, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple suggestions. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would ask someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. They already liked it. Sayori likes anything, and Gingo did too. But based on that, I'll gladly give you any suggestions of my own. First of all... <laughs> excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent long enough establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. And the game Joe liked my poem too, you know. I think he liked everyone's poem. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's new here, idiot. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up, her eyes glowing red. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress a new member, Yuri. Uh, uh, that's not what I... I... Uh. <laughs> you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that the game girl appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? But how do you know he appreciate, didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. Oh, wait, no, she said that. Are you that full of yourself? Oh, no, if I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. <laughs> uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? <laughs> I 
was the one whose boobs magically grew in size bigger as soon as the game just started showing up. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, you don't know. All right, you know, I'm just gonna go with that. N Natsuki? Um, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as they noticed I was standing there. The game, Joe? She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then that wouldn't happen in the first place. What's the point of making your poem all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to figure it out. They explain that to her, the game, Joe. Well, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex thoughts, feelings, and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary, but limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, the game, Joe? Uh, well... How did I get dragged in this in the first place? I take a look back at my past and realize... Cupcakes. It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course it's going to be... We're gonna go with Yuri, because she's got titties. No! What? Atsuki? You're right that I like your poems. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all! Yuri wouldn't even take my poems seriously! Mm. I understand. <laughs> I, I, un I don't even know what voice I'm doing anymore. I understand. Yuri. <sighs> You're a seriously talented writer. It's not a secret that I was impressed. Well, well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, you're still put it, putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. And that's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I, I see. I didn't notice that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Natsuki, you took it way too far. You should have just, you know, grabbed her titties and smacked her around a few. Yuri, Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, this would, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you, are you kidding me? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You heard the game, Joe. He is in charge. The man is always in charge. Have you not read your core processing? You both said some things you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should do? Natsuki clenches her fists in pure rage. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped at the point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. To be fair, no one really got her. I didn't take Yuri's side, really, either. I end up feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sorry, uh, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. That'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki re snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem in her hands and throws it in the trash, right where it was supposed to be. Sugi! She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything all- Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Except a little. But that's fine. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, the game, Joe. You're too kind. I'm thankful for you having... For... I'm thankful to you for having a part in this club now, or whatever else. Uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. Though. So, eh? Yeah. 
What thing did Natsuke say? I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm going to make some tea. Ah, god damn. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's about time to leave. How did you all feel about sharing homes? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, mostly. The game joke, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same, it was pretty cool. It was a neat thing to talk with everyone. About with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poem will turn out even better. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod with myself, my newfound determination. The Kim Joe. Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It hits me directly in the forehead. I don't survive. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent so much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori. What about, about what happened earlier? Oh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and that's okay. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. Uh, that really is the first time I've seen it, them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't have to hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. What are you even talking about, you dumb bitch? I just want your opinion, that's all. I see why they make good friends with you. Phew! You know the game, Joe. It's nice to get I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what's making me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's hee hee. Every day is going to be so much fun. Ugh. Looks like Sarah still hasn't caught on the kind of situation I'm in. Sure being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? Wow. I'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pet Sayori on the shoulders. I said that to myself, then to her, but it's easier to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Alright, we're gonna leave, uh, the leave off here. Save it real quick. Uh, I guess we'll save it there. Okay. So this has been the Game Joe at Dark PB1. Happy uh, 69 subscriber special. Hope you all like this video. It's definitely going to be a longer one than usual for the 69 special. Uh, you know, it's whatever. But uh, I mean, yeah, no. I, I hope you all like this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell to stay up to date on my video. This video is probably going to be a real long one probably over an hour long, but that's fine. Uh, peace out.